Higher Physics Notes, Unit 1, Section 2, Forces. Part 6. We're going to here look at the resultant of several force vectors and the inverse process to that, the resolution of force vectors. So, uh, let's begin with A. The resultant of several force vectors. Well, I'll start with um, a fairly simple case. in which we have a body like this. Um, let's imagine that this is north to give us a, a reference direction. And we might have, say, 40 newtons in that direction. So that's uh, east, 20 newtons in that direction. 100 newtons in that direction, and let's say 50 newtons in that direction. So the question is, what is the resultant of all of these forces? Well, let's be clear on what the resultant is. The resultant force is the single force which has the same effect as all the individual forces added together as vectors. That's with vector addition. In this particular case, we could uh, take our situation and transfer it into this. So let's go back to that one. So what I could do is take the horizontal, or not so much horizontal here, is east-west, I should say, uh, direction. And it should be fairly obvious that if I've got 40 going east and 20 going west, then the result of those two added tip to tail leaves me with 20 going to the east. If I do the same in the north-south direction, which is perpendicular to the east-west one, obviously, I've got 50 uh, north and 100 south, so that gives me 50 newtons south. Now, I'm not finished yet, of course, because uh, I've still got two forces there, and I really want to end up with, with one. So I have to add these two together uh, tip to tail. Well, as you can see, they're at right angles to each other. So what I can then do is I can take a further step. Down the way. And I can add these vectors tip to tail. 
So to do that, I simply draw my vector diagram. So I've got 20 newtons. That's not the one I want. 20 newtons uh, east. And I've got my 50 newtons south. Now I need to move my 50 newtons south so that the tip of the 20 touches the tail of the 50, like so. This is, of course, the tip to tail vector addition method, which we must use. And the resultant goes from the start of the diagram, where I started up there, to the finish. And I get that. So there's my uh, resultant. I'll call that resultant FR for resultant. So um, there is my resultant vector. Uh, I need to specify two aspects of it, both its magnitude and direction. So the magnitude first, all vector quantities have both magnitude and direction. So magnitude is easily found using Pythagoras, or at least his theorem, because Pythagoras is sadly no longer with us. Um, and that equals 20 squared plus 50 squared. So when you work that out, you get 400 plus 2,500, meaning that uh, fr squared gives me 2,900. I'm not finished yet because that's fr squared, so I need to take the square root of that. So the square root of 2,500, uh, 2,900 is 53.9 newtons to three significant figures. Right, so that's the magnitude. Uh, what about the direction? The headings for magnitude and direction are very useful. Well, uh, what we have to do here is go to the beginning of the diagram, superimpose the direction indicators, and then look at the angles. Well, remember, we always measure ultimately our bearing clockwise from north. So coming around from north, I've got that, which is a right angle, but I've got uh, a further theta to go before I can get all the way around to my chosen vector. So I've got to get theta and then add it to 90 degrees. So if we look at our triangle, it's a right angle triangle, we've got the opposite and the adjacent, so that's a tan. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Remember your Sokotua, you need to know that off by heart. So the opposite side here is 50 and the adjacent is 20. So theta is the inverse tan of 5 over 2. Well, that's what, 2.5, isn't it? So if we get the inverse tan of... Let's try that, sorry. Inverse 10 of 5 divided by 2. And we get 68.2 degrees. 
Now we're not quite finished because that's the um, that's the angle theta itself, but we need the bearing. So the bearing is the ninety degrees, which you can see in there, plus the theta, which you can see in there. So that's plus my uh, sixty-eight point two. So what does that give me? 90 plus 68.2, 158.2 degrees. Now we always quote a three-figure bearing, so that becomes 158 using normal rounding. So finally then, the resultant force is 53.9 newtons to bearing of 158. We don't need the degree sign in the bearing nowadays. So that's how you add forces tip to tail to get the resultant of several forces. So we've been adding forces there to get the resultant. Uh, part B of this note is the resolution of force vectors and uh, resolution means breaking up a single vector which you can think of as the resultant into its two perpendicular uh, components. So um, here's the sort of thing we're talking about. Uh, probably best to begin with an xy axis because this is most like the maths that you might be familiar with. So I'm going to draw an xy axis here, Cartesian axis. Okay, uh, that will be my x and that will be my y. And I'm going to imagine I've got a force going at some angle to the x-axis, like so. And I'm just going to call that F. There's my, my origin. And I will make F have an angle theta with the x-axis. That's the convention. Okay. Right. So what I now want to do then is say, how could I break F up into two perpendicular components? Well, if I drop the perpendicular down to the x-axis, it hits there. That's uh, it's making a little right angle. And I can drop a horizontal down to the y-axis, or across to the y-axis and it hits at a little right angle uh, there. Now what that allows me to see is, well, there is a vector which I will draw in here in green, which I can call F X F subscript X. Now, F subscript X is the component of F in the X direction. Now, X needn't mean horizontal. I mean, it very often does mean horizontal. In projectiles, for example, the X direction is by definition horizontal and the Y direction is vertical. So it often is horizontal and vertical here. But X and Y don't necessarily mean horizontal, so just bear that in mind. They're just two perpendicular uh, components. Okay. Now, um, what would be the equivalent y component? Well, the y component, which goes with the x, is the component that you add tip to tail to the x component to get the resultant. So that would be this one here.
that would be f y. And you can see that these two components, fx and fy, make a right angle with each other. And they are added to each other, tip to tail, as you can see. So whereas previously we added two vectors tip to tail to get the resultant, that's a vector addition. Vector resolution is the exact opposite. We start with the resultant, that's the red vector f, and we're breaking it up into its two perpendicular components, fx and fy. Well, we can use a little bit of simple trigonometry to get expressions for fx and fy uh, by remembering our Sokotoa. So, um, let's look at the first one. If we take, uh, let's take cos theta, well, cos theta in your Sokotoa is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, if you look at theta and go to the adjacent, the adjacent side is fx, and the hypotenuse, of course, is f. That allows us then to say that fx itself is simply f cos theta. So there's our x component. fx is always f cos theta, and you should try and picture this diagram in your head whenever you're resolving these vectors. Resolving being the verb from resolution, which is the noun. Uh, what about fy? Well, I know already that I'm going to need sine theta for that, so let's see what happens. Sokotoa sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, our opposite side here is fy, and the hypotenuse is f. So if I rearrange that for fy, I get fy is equal to f sine theta. So there we are. That's how you resolve forces in the horizontal and the, and the vertical. Let's do a simple example. So, um, typical kind of situation might be you've got, let's say, a catapult and you've got a Let's say the stone is being fired in a catapult and the prongs of the catapult are sort of uh, here. And there's a bit of elastic goes around the stone like so. And here's the kind of centre line where the elastic would be if it weren't stretched back. And it's pulled back and of course the stone when it's released will move along this line. So there's an overall force going to the right on that uh, stone. This is the kind of view from above of the, uh, the catapult. Okay. So let's imagine we draw the free body diagram now. Let's get my reference lines in. So this is just a horizontal reference line. And here's my vertical reference line. Now these effectively become my x and y axes. So I'm thinking of this as the x axis. That is the y axis. Now what we've got here then are two forces acting on the stone. Uh, let's call that uh, F, which equals uh, 20 newtons, let's say. And let's imagine it's making an angle of 10 degrees with the x-axis. And 
by it's a symmetrical situation. So the other force from the other elastic is going down there, and that's also a force of twenty newtons, and that's also at ten degrees. Let's see. So the question is, what is the resultant force on the stone? Okay. Well, um, the first thing to notice is that we can resolve each of the two forces into their perpendicular components. So uh, what I mean by that is I can take an Fx from the top force. So I'm looking at the top force at the moment. That top force will have a component called Fx going there. Um, and it will also have a y component going up here. Okay. Now you may wonder why I'm not uh, drawing Fy across to the right like I did up here. You see how Fy is across on the right hand side of the square. Well actually um, it doesn't really matter what side you draw it on, it's the same vector. So what I mean by that is I could have drawn Fy up there if I'd wanted. So that vector there, Fy, has the same direction and the same magnitude as the one on the right. The one on the left is not positioned tip to tail, so it's not much good for vector addition. But the one on the right is positioned tip to tail, so that's quite useful for vector addition. You can put it in either position according to convenience. Now it's convenient for me to put Fy on the left hand side of the uh, rectangle there, as you'll see in a minute. So that's the upper force resolved into Fx and Fy. Now the lower force can be resolved similarly, so that it will also have an Xy going along there. I'll draw this in, in red. Uh, an fx, I should say. So there's another fx. So we've actually got two fx's going along to the right-hand side. And if I draw the other fy from the lower force in here, you can see what it does. So there's my other fy. So the two fy components are both acting on the stone but in opposite direction. So in the y direction, uh, I'm going to call that lower one Fy dash and Fx dash, just so we don't get them uh, mixed up. Uh, in the y direction, uh, basically Fy up the way as a vector plus Fy dash down the way basically equal zero. They balance. They must be the same size because they're both coming from 20 newton vectors at 10 degrees. So we don't need to worry about them. They balance so there's no motion of the stone in the y direction. We've got balanced forces. In the x direction though it's a different uh, kettle of fish. Fx is going to be F cos theta. Now both of those Fys would, be, would have been F sine thetas, but I didn't bother working that out because I knew they were going to balance anyway. So Fx is F cos theta. What is F again? It's 20. What's the angle? At 10. So if I can get the cosine of uh, 
10 degrees. That gives me, well, the cosine of 10 degrees is about 0 0.98. So when I multiply that by 20, I get 19.7 newtons. So the component of the 20 newton force in the x direction, each 20 newton force, is 19.7 newtons. Okay, so uh, the total force in the x direction is 2 times fx. Why is it 2? Because I've got the green one there, the x component of the upper blue force of 20 newtons, but I've also got the fx dash component of the, the, the x component of the lower 20 newton force. So I've got these two x components. So that gives me then 2 times 19.7. So when you work that out, you'll get 39.4 newtons. That's the resultant force on the, the stone. If you then knew the mass of the stone, you could use F equals ME to get your acceleration because that is the unbalanced force on the stone. And that's how you can resolve forces into their horizontal and vertical components.